Right, so this question involved dividing and multiplying fractions. So this one involves adding and subtracting fractions, which is normally the more difficult one because you have to find the LCD. So what do we do? We try and factorize everything first. Okay, this, this is already, in fact, I mean, it's x minus 2, nothing to do here, x plus 2. This is what we need to factorize. Okay, so we got 6 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2 minus 9x minus 5. And then what are the factors here? x squared plus x minus 6. Are we dealing with 6 times 1 or 3 times 2? 3 times 2. So that will be x plus 3. x minus 2. Okay, 3 minus 2 will give you the positive 1. Positive times the negative will give you the negative. Alright, so now. So now, let's look at all the factors that we have. We have an x minus 2. x minus 2. We have an x plus 2. And we have them. So basically, we've got three factors here. Can you see that? That needs to be part of the LCD. Three. So, let's do a shortcut. The short, I'm just using the shortcut here, which is just to write down your LCD one time. So we got x minus 2, x plus 2, multiplied by x plus 3. So this 6 needs to be multiplied by two factors there. Can you see that? I can see why it's seven marks now. It's going to take quite long. So you multiply it by two factors plus three. The three needs to be multiplied also because there's an x plus two and an x plus two there. So what's missing here is x minus two and x plus three. So therefore it's two factors there. And here you need to be careful with this one here. This is where students make a mistake. Be careful. This minus sign is here. So there must be an open bracket because the negative is going to affect every single term here. Okay, so be careful with that. That's a common mistake that students make. You must open up a bracket here. So we got 9x minus 5. Let's compare now. x plus 3, x plus 3, we have it. x minus 2, x minus 2, we have it. The only thing missing is one factor. Can you see that? Alright, so let me just add in all that. So this one was x plus 2 x minus 3. This one was x minus 2 and, sorry, not x minus 3, this is x plus 3. Okay, so here we got uh, 3 times x minus 2, x plus 3. Okay, here, what's missing here is x plus 2. Okay, you okay with that? Right, so now we need to multiply this whole thing out. Okay, I can see why it's so long. Okay, so we got the 6 here. Then we're going to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to do it. A quick method here because the coefficients are just positive one here. Can you see that? So when the coefficient, except this one, we can't use a quick method here. Right, but here to multiply this out, x times x will give me x squared. Then you add two plus three, which is five. So the middle term is going to be five x, and then you multiply two times three, that will be six. That's a quick method of multiplying. It only works when the coefficient of x is a positive one. All right. You can't, you, otherwise you can't do this. So that's plus 3. Again, now, quick method is x times x, which is x squared. Then you've got minus 2 plus 3. What is minus 2 plus 3? It's a positive 1. So that would be positive x. And now you multiply minus 2 times 3, which is minus 6. Okay, so here is the one where most people make a mistake. So you have to open up a bracket. Okay, so I'm just going to do this the long way. 9x times x will be... 9x squared, 9x times 2 is plus 18x, minus 5 times x is minus 5x, and minus 5 times 2, which will be minus 10. Alright, so now it's about removing all these brackets here. So let me just do that. So that's going to be 6x squared 
plus 6 times 5, that is 30x, plus 6 times 6, that will be 36, plus 3 times x squared, which is 3x squared, then 3 times x here, which will be plus 3x, and then 3 times minus 6, which is minus 18. Okay, now we are multiplying by negative, so all the signs will change here. Okay. So that's a 9x squared, it will become minus 9x squared minus 18x plus 5x plus 10, all divided by all divided by the LCD there of x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, now let's see what we're gonna do here. We have to start simplifying as far as possible there. Right, so let's start adding up our like terms. So what do we have? We have 6x squared minus 9x squared. Okay, so 6 minus 9, that will give me minus 3x squared. Now, let's look for, oh, plus, sorry, I forgot about this one here. So that's 6x squared plus 3x squared, which is 9x squared minus 9x squared, which is, it's a 0x squared. You okay with that? Oh, I didn't see that. Right, so that's an x squared, x squared, x squared. So that's 6 plus 3 is 9 minus 9. So the x squares are out now. Let me just cancel it. The x squares are out. So that's there, there, there. Okay. Now, let's add up all the x's. So what do we have now? We have 30x plus 3x, which is 33x. Okay, 33x. Minus um, 18x, which is 15x, correct? 15x plus 5x, which is 20x. So therefore we get 20x. So let's remove all the x's now. So that's 30, again, plus 3, that's 33. Minus uh, 3, there and there. Alright, so now let's deal with the constants. What are the constants that we have here? We got 36 minus 18, which is um, 18. That's it here, 20. 36 minus 18 and 18 is 30, sorry, that's 18. 36 minus uh, 18, that would be 18. Um, just plus 10. Correct? 28. Please double check me, is that correct? 28 then? Okay, so now, what do we do? We will try and factorize that top. So, what is the highest common factor that we can take out here in the numerator? Um, 4. Because 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 7 is 28, correct? So that will be 4. So that is 5x, so 4 times 5x is 20x, plus 7 times 4 is 28, all divided by x minus 3, x plus 2, x plus 3. It doesn't seem to be working out very nicely here, yeah? unless we made a mistake somewhere. Okay, we need to check this here. Alright, so you're sitting in the exam. <coughs> right. Why is it? It's not working out. It's not a nice question because we're expecting things to cancel at the end. So now, I want to check this. Right, so how do we check? Substitute a value for x in the original equation. Okay, let me the advanced calculator. Let me the calculator and I'll do it fast. Yeah, you see, this is a calculator that you need for engineering. You see, if you want to check your answer, <coughs> do it very fast because if I can type out this equation. Okay, so I'm going to type out 6 over x minus 2 plus 3 divided by 2 plus x minus 9x minus 5 divided by x squared plus x minus 6. So what am I doing? Okay, 
I am going to substitute a value for x in the original equation, the original expression, sorry. So let's see what value, I'm not going to substitute 3 because I will get a denominator of 0. I won't substitute minus 2 and then I will also not substitute, sorry, it's not that right. Now, I won't, we got a 3 minus 2, I will not substitute also minus 3. So let's take 1, let's choose an easy value like 1. So if I substitute when x is equal to 1, I'm getting minus 4. And if I put 1 here, let's see, do I get the same minus 4? So let's try this one. So I'm going to try out more than one value, okay, just to make sure. So when I put x is equal to 1, I'm saying y is equal to minus 4. Let me try out another value. If I substitute, um, sorry, this one here was a minus 2. Minus 2, and minus 2. It's a minus 2. X plus 3, X minus 2, X plus 2. Sorry? X plus 3, X minus 3, so that's X minus 3, that's what it's supposed to be. X minus 2, X plus 2. And then X plus 3, okay. Don't worry, I was not checking this yet, I'm checking the original expression, okay. Right, so when I substituted a 1, I got minus 4. When I substitute, let me just try 6. So when x is equal to 6, I'm saying y is equal to 37 over 72. All right, so what I want to do now, let's take the, the simplified answer. Let me type it out. So I got 4 times 5x plus 7 divided by x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 3, so x plus 2, x minus 2, and then x plus 3. If I substitute a 1, oh yes, so the answer is fine. If I substitute 1 here, I'm getting minus 4, let me try 6. If I substitute 6, I'm getting 37, so there is no mistake, this is the correct answer. Okay, so I'm just showing you that you can check expressions on the calculator, but this one is a faster calculator. You'll see when you come to N4, when you're dealing with complex numbers and integration and stuff, then this is the one to have. Okay, okay we move on to the next one. You can pause that. All right, so we're moving on. Solve for x. So this question here, how many marks was it? <coughs> Six marks. All right, so this is a, a log equation. Six marks in the final exam. So we got log of x plus 1 to the base 2 plus log 2 to the base x plus 1. So here, x plus 1 is not the base, but here it is the base. Okay, so what can we do here? So, from our log logs. <coughs> it's called the change of base log. <coughs> so, I can have the log, um, let me go p, to the base q. Okay, log of p to the base q. So this can be written as 1 divided by log of q to the base p. That is a log law, change of base. Okay, so now I'm going to use this law here. Why am I going to use this law? So I can make the bases the same. Right, so now I, I can choose to change this one. Oh, that one, it doesn't make a difference. But let me choose, let me change that one. So I have log of x plus 1 to the base 2 
and here yeah, I'm going to change it. Once you write down 1 divided by, then you're going to swap positions away. Okay, so this is going to become log of x plus 1 to the base 2. Okay, now what do you notice? These two are common terms. So, let's, let's make it easier and let's use a substitution. Right, so what I'm going to do is I will let log of x plus 1 to the base 2 equal to k. You're going to see why I'm doing this here now. So I will let log of x plus 1 to the base 2 equal to k. So therefore, this is going to be k is equal to 1 divided by, and this one is also k now. Can you see that? This is also k. So now I have a new equation, and I'm going to solve for k. So what do I do? I can multiply by k on both sides. So if I multiply by k on both sides, I'm going to get k squared is equal to 1. You can follow what happened there? But I just, same as cross multiply. So k squared is equal to 1. So if k squared is equal to 1, then k is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is equal to plus or minus 1. Follow what happened there? Yes. Right, so now, what does that mean? It means k is equal to 1 or k is equal to minus 1. But what was k? k was log x plus 1 to the base 2. So now I will substitute back log of x plus 1 to the base 2 is equal to 1 or log of x plus 1 to the base 2 is equal to minus 1. Now, okay, what can I do now? I can use this one. If log a to the base b is equal to c, this is a log equation, then I can convert from logs to exponents. So now a is going to equal to b to the power c. So I'm converting from log form to exponential form. I can do that here. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, my a is x plus 1. It's everything here. So you must have it in brackets so you don't make a mistake. So that's in brackets there. My b, the base, is 2. And on the right hand side, c is 1. So I'm going to follow. a is equal to b to the power c. So what is a? x plus 1 is equal to b. The base of the log becomes the base of the exponent. So that's going to be 2 to the power 1. <coughs> Here, x plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power minus 1. Can you see that? Okay. So now, x is equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1, or x plus 1 is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so now x is equal to 1 over 2 minus 1. So x is equal to 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is going to be minus 1 over 2. Okay, so now we got two solutions. Okay, we need to check. First of all, let's go back. Let's go back here to the original equation. So what do we know about logs? Okay, let's write this down. So if I have log of a to the base b, okay, so we know that a must be greater than zero. Okay, so because we can't, there's log of a zero, the log of zero is undefined, log of a negative is also undefined. And the base, your base B, must also be greater than zero, but your base must also not equal to one, because log of one is zero. Those are your restrictions. Okay, let's write that down. Okay. 
So what does that mean? Let's take the log of. So I got the log of x plus 1 to the base 2. Okay. So we know that a must be greater than 0. So that means, what is a in this case? It's represented by x plus 1. So that means x plus 1 must be greater than 0. So that means x must be greater than minus 1. Okay. Let's check here. I got x is equal to 1. Right, so x is equal to 1. If 1 is greater than minus 1. Okay. Also, if you substitute it back here. Okay. If I substitute here into the original equation, if I put a 1 here, let me just show you how to test it. Okay, if you're having problems with the restrictions, all you do is you're going to take this x value, substitute back, and check if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So now let's take the first one. If I put a 1 here, so I'm going to have 1 plus 1, which is 2. So I'm going to have log of 2 to the base 2. Okay. Then here, on the right hand side, I'm going to have log 2, and again, x is equal to 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. Can you see that? All I did was substitute back for x there. So the left hand side is log 2 to the base 2. What is log 2 to the base 2? It's 1. The left hand side is 1. The right hand side is 1. So therefore, x is equal to 1 satisfies the equation. Let's try the other one. Okay, let's try the other one. When I put x is equal to minus half, so what is minus half plus 1? Minus half plus 1 is half. So my left hand side is log of half to the base 2. The right hand side, log 2 minus half plus 1 is is half. Okay. So now we got log of half to the base 2 and we got log of 2 to the base half. What is log of half to the base 2? Let me show you. Okay. Let me show you here quickly. Without a calculator. Right, so now I got log of half to the base 2. If I want to simplify this without a calculator, this is the same as log of 1 over 2 is the same as 2 to the power minus 1. Can you see that? To the base 2. So if I now, I can bring down my exponent. So that's going to be minus 1 log 2 to the base 2. So minus 1. And what is log 2 to the base 2? It's 1. So minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So that is um, testing out the left hand side log up to the base 2 without a calculator. Right on the right hand side, let's do the same thing. So we got log of 2 to the base half. Right, so how do we do this without a calculator? I'm going to use this law here. I'm going to write it as log 2 all divided by log half. It's also a change of base law. So I'm writing it as log 2 divided by log half. So therefore, we got log 2 and then I got log 1 over 2 is the same as 2 to the power minus 1. Can you see that? So now I have log 2 and then when I have an exponent I can bring it down so that will be minus 1 log 2. What do you notice now? Log 2 and log 2 cancel. So you end up one with 1 divided by minus 1 which is equal to minus 1. So therefore, what did I have here? Minus 1, minus 1. So what does that mean? Both answers are correct. When I test out x is equal to 1, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And when I test out x is equal to minus half, the left hand side is also equal to the right hand side. So therefore, both answers are 100% correct.
You have to test it, but I'm just doing it without it. You can use a calculator in a few seconds and check this. All right, so that was six marks, but the trick is in the beginning. You can see that. The trick is in the beginning, change of base, use a substitution, and then it becomes simple. It's just a quadratic equation. Okay, the next one, again, for six bucks. Okay, this one is for six bucks. So let's see what we can do. So here we got a to the power half times b to the power half minus b. Okay, we notice that b is common there. Can you see that? So let's try and take out B as a common factor. Okay. Um, let's see now. Do I want to take out B to the power half as a common factor? Or do I take out B as a common factor? So I think that will be this. What I do here depends on what happens this side here. So let's work this part out first. Okay. So I've got my division. Right, so let's just leave it like that for now because I, don't, I need to simplify inside here, okay? So I'm going to get an LCD here, so that will be B to the power half plus A to the power half, all divided by B to the power half, and that becomes, I mean, that is your exponent of negative one. Can you see that? Now, okay, now, before I change this division to multiplication, I want to deal with this negative power here. Okay, so let me just show you a quick uh, method how to deal with the negative. So if I have something like 1 over 3 to the power minus 1, okay, I have a fraction and it's raised to a negative power. So therefore, to make, if I make this exponent positive, then I will have to swap the numerator and denominator of whatever's on the inside. So that becomes 3 over 1. So therefore, that just becomes 3 to the power 1, which is 3. You can even test it out on the calculator. Okay. So 1 over 3 to the power minus 1 is the same as 3 over 1 to the power positive 1. Okay, so now, let me do that first. So, here's my fraction. If I swap numerator and denominator, so that becomes b to the power half divided by b to the power half plus a to the power half. And now it's just a positive one. Can you see that? Okay, now, now let's deal with this division sign. So I'm going to change the division to multiplication. And when you change division to multiplication, what do you do? You swap numerator and denominator so it becomes b to the power half plus a to the power half all divided by b to the power half. Okay. Right, so now, yeah, let's see what we can do here. Right. So if I have to take out, because at the end we want something to cancel over here. So let, let me just try it out on this side. If I take out b to the power half as a common factor, okay. Um, let me just think now, do I want to do that? If I take it out as a common factor, let's just see what it is. Right. If I take out b to the power half as a common factor, I'm going to do a to the power half minus, what will happen here? So what's happening is, you're actually going b divided by b to the power. That's what's actually happening. Okay. So, b divided by b to the power half is the same as b, 1 minus half, which is equal to b to the power half. Okay, so therefore, this is going to be b to the power half. All divided, okay, so let's see, if I do that here, I'm going to have b to the power half here, a to the power half minus b to the power half. Some of you are looking confused. Okay, you check it. 
If I multiply b to the power half times a to the power half, it's a to the power half times b to the power half. Then if I multiply b to the power half times b to the power half, I am multiplying and the bases are the same. So when I multiply and the bases are the same, how many times do I write down the base? Once. What do you do to this exponents half and half? Half plus half is what? It's one. There's your exponent one. Can you see that? That's a noun. <laughs> so that's all divided by a minus b. And let's see what we have here. So we got our b to the power half, a to the power half minus b to the power half all over a minus b. And let's see. Now, okay, 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 I can see what's happening. Right. Right, so I've got my fraction on the left and I have my fraction on the right. Can you see that? Okay. So what do you notice? This one and that one there. It will cancel. Can you see that? So b to the power half and b to the power half will cancel. So let's write down what remains. What remains is a to the power half minus b to the power half divided by a minus b. And then I am multiplying by, let me swap this around. Okay, I'm going to see why I'm swapping this around. This is the same as a to the power half plus b to the power half. Can you see that? Okay, now why did I swap it around? Because I'm noticing that these two are the same, those two are the same. The only difference is what? It's a minus, that's a plus. So this is the difference of two squares. And so if I got x minus y times x plus y, the difference of two squares. So if I multiply, that's going to be x squared minus y squared. So my x is a to the power half, and my y is b to the power half. Can you see that? So now, let's write it down here. So now, there's my x minus y, and there's my x plus y. So the formula is x squared, so therefore it's going to be a to the power half, all squared minus b to the power half, all squared, all divided by a minus b. Right. So now, when you have a power raised to a higher power, what do you do to the powers? A power raised to a higher power, you will multiply the exponents. So, what is half times two? Half times two? One. Minus b. Half times two again? One. So we got a minus b on the top, a minus b in the bottom. So, we got, you can see now, a minus b, anything divided by itself is equal to one. It's a bit of a tricky example here, you can see that. So again, what should we do in, in order to make sure? Take your calculator, substitute a here. Now you can substitute any value you want to because the final answer is 1. So what you can do is, you got your fraction, any calculator will work, it's just that that one works faster, you see? But any case of your calculator, you got your fraction button, replace a with a certain number. Replace b with a certain Don't go and put a is equal to 5 and 3 up here. If you're putting 5 here, it must be 5 here. Put the same value for b. Type it out exactly as you see it here. Press equals to, and let's see. Doesn't matter what you choose for a or b. You must get 1. Then pause that. Example, again, 2.0 2.2.1. Simplify. There's another one. 2.2.2 log 16 to the base a minus log 4 to the base b divided by log 4 to the base a minus log 2 to the base b. Right, this one is 4 marks. Okay, so what can we do? What can we do to simplify this here? The bases are not the same. Can you see that? Yes. If the bases are not the same, you cannot combine the logs. 
only if the bases are the same. So the bases are not the same. So what can we do now? Let's see. Okay. We can deal with this number 16 here. Okay. Now, we can change 16. So remember that 16 can be written as 4 squared. 16 can also be written as 2 to the power 4. Right, so if you're using a base of 4, then it's 4 squared. If you're using a base of 2, then it's 2 to the power 4. Right, so now, so what do we do now? Do we use the 4 squared? Or do we use the 2 to the power 4? We use 2 to the power 4. Let's use 2 to the power 4. Let's see what happens. So we got log. That's your base A, and that's 2 to the power 4. Okay. Minus log base B there, and 4 can be written as 2 squared. Okay. I'm just looking at the denominator. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's just carry on and see what happens. All right. So that will be log. Now your four again. Four can be written as two squared to the base a, and that's minus log two to the base b. So let's see what happens when we do the same. Okay. So now I can bring down these exponents. So that will be four log 2 to the base a minus 2 log 2 to the base b all divided by 2 log 2 to the base a minus log 2 to the base b okay we are clear what happened here so all i did was rewrite this in exponential form bring down my exponents now Okay, now, you notice now there's a 4 and there's a 2 in the numerator. You've got two terms and there is a common factor here on the top. Can you see that? Be careful, you cannot go and cancel anything here. You cannot cancel because there's a minus sign separating the terms. Only if it was multiplication, then you can cancel. Multiplication and division. But if there's a minus sign separating, you need to factorize. Okay, so I can take out a common factor on the top. So on the top, if I take out 2, what am I left with? If I take out 2, I'm left with 2 log 2 to the base A minus log 2 to the base B. We are clear with that? Okay. And in the denominator, there is no common factor, you just copy it down as it is. So your denominator is 2 log 2 to the base A minus log 2 to the base B. So what do you notice now? That these two are identical. Can you see that? So therefore, they can cancel. So you end up with just 2 over 1, which is 2. The next question, this is question 3 now, 3.1 for 6 marks. Word problem, chapter 4 in your textbook. And this is the exam question, when 1 is added to the numerator and the denominator of a fraction, the fraction becomes half. Then, second statement there, when 2 is subtracted from the numerator, and the denominator of the same fraction, the fraction becomes 1 over 5. Okay. Determine the fraction for 6 months. Okay. So, let's define our fraction. 
the fraction has a numerator and a denominator. Okay, the without saying that the numerator and the denominator is the same, obviously if it's the same then it's going to equal to one. But anyway, um, so let the fraction let's let's define our fraction. Let's call it x over y, or a over b, or p over q. It's up to you what you want to call the fraction. Okay, so this is the fraction. Determine the fraction. This is the this is our final answer. Okay, we want to find out what is the numerator, what is the denominator, and then we can divide it. So now, when one is added to the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. So that means I got my x, I'm adding 1 to the numerator, adding 1 to the denominator. Can you see that? Then the fraction becomes 1 over 2. Okay. Then second statement. When 2 is subtracted from the numerator, so it's the same fraction, they say. So it's x minus 2. When 2 is subtracted from the numerator and the denominator, so that means y minus 2 also, you're clear with that? The fraction becomes y over 5. We have simultaneous equations now. We need to solve for x and y. Okay. So, what can we do? Okay. Let's get rid of, let's, let's deal with this one here. Okay. So, I don't want the fraction. So, if I, in order for me to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to cross multiply one time. Okay. So, I'm going to go x plus 1, multiply the numerator of the fraction on the left. It must be multiplied by the denominator of the fraction on the right. That is cross multiply. Okay. So that's x plus 1 times 2 is equal to 1 times y plus 1. You are clear with that? Okay. So now I got x times 2, which is 2x, 1 times 2. That's 2 is equal to y plus 1. So what do I want to do? I want to make y the subject of the formula and then substitute equation 1 into equation 2. That's what I want to do. Okay. So therefore, I got 2x minus, uh, plus 2 minus 1 is equal to y. So therefore, 2x and 2 minus 1, that will be 1. So that is my first equation. I made y the subject of the formula. So y is equal to 2x plus 1. Now, I am going to replace y with 2x plus 1 in the second equation. Okay. So now, I'm going to substitute here. I'm going to take this information here and replace it because I want my equation in terms of x only, not x and y. So I have x minus 2 divided by y, but what was y? y was equal to 2x plus 1, so there's my 2x plus 1, and then I have my minus 2. So I'm replacing y. There's my y. Can you see that? There's y here. And that's your y. Okay. So that is the left hand side and this is equal to 1 over 5 on the right hand side. So now I have x minus 2, 2x, 1 minus 2 is minus 1 is equal to 1 over 5. So I have a fraction on the left, fraction on the right. I'm going to cross multiply again. Right, so I'm going to go 5 times this. That's going to be 5 times x minus 2 is equal to 1 times 2x minus 1. Now you can see it's easy from here. So then 5 times x will be 5x. 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. And then we got 2x minus 1. So we take all our x's to the left hand side. So it's going to be 5x minus 2x is equal to minus 1 plus 10. 
So 5x minus 2x is equal to 3x and 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. So therefore, x is equal to 9 divided by 3. So x is equal to 3. Okay. So now go back. What was y equal to? Remember that y was equal to 2x plus 1. So y is equal to 2x plus 1. So we got when x is equal to 3. 2 times 3, that will be 6 plus 1, which is 7. So we got 3 and 7. Let's check if this is right. Okay. Okay. So let's substitute. So therefore, the okay, final answer first. So the fraction. So therefore, the fraction is, remember we define the fraction as x over y in the beginning. So we must go and substitute the question stated, determine the fraction. Can you say that? So the, the fraction is x over y, which is equal to 3 over 7. Now we must test this out. What do the question state? When 1 is added to the numerator and denominator of a fraction, it becomes half. So, let's see what happens here. So, I've got 3 over 7. So, what are they saying? If I add 1, and if I add 1 here, if I add 1 to the numerator, 1 to the denominator, so what is 3 plus 1? 4. What is 7 plus 1? 8. What is 4 over 8? It's half. That is, so the first statement is correct. Let's check the second one. When 2 is subtracted from the numerator and the denominator, the fraction becomes 1 over 5. So therefore, we got our 3 over 7 again. So what are we saying? We say when 2 is subtracted from the numerator and the denominator. So we're going minus 2, minus 2. You're clear with that? So 3 minus 2 is 1. 7 minus 2? 5. So it's perfect. We know our answer is correct. Okay, let's see that. So the fraction is 3 over 7, and that is the solution for this one. You have to check your answer.